Hello, and welcome back to The Grub Perspective. And in today's video, I'm gonna be covering my uh, rifle maintenance kit. Uh, you'll notice that I say uh, rifle maintenance kit instead of a uh, rifle cleaning kit because they are slightly different. Uh, with the addition of a couple small things, you can take your rifle cleaning kit to a rifle maintenance kit. Um, and being able to maintain your rifle, i.e. like fix little problems, uh, tighten things up and whatnot um, is going to be like a professional infantryman skill that you need to uh, be able to do and be ready to do. Um, now you'll definitely see some things on the table that you might think are kind of silly to carry with you all the time, and, but before you uh, ask about it in the comments or comment about it, I just want you to keep in mind that this is meant for a military rifle. And you may think, what's the difference between a military and a civilian rifle? And in form and function, nothing. It's the same thing, right? But where it is different is the mileage. Um, a civilian rifle is going to be in much better shape than a military rifle, you know? Uh, and that's irregardless of how many rounds you've put through it, um, you know. And the reason why is because a military rifle is going to be exposed to rain, uh, in some cases salt water, it's going to be exposed to mud, dirt, sand, uh, extreme cold, and in, in addition to all that, it's going to be carried all the time. Uh, it's gonna get banged around. It's gonna get dropped. It's gonna get. Um, it's gonna be attached to people as they're falling down hills and stuff like that. And all in all, it's just gonna be really beat on. Um, where that is not the normal civilian's use. Uh, I know that uh, people are starting to do a lot of that stuff now, and it's really awesome. So I think that. Uh, this video could be well well received by 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 you uh, as well if you're if, if that's you uh, uh, watching this. Um, so to first talk about a couple things that are common problems with a rifle uh, the rifle maintenance. Uh, the biggest one is just being not prepared. Um, and I don't know if it's out of laziness or ignorance. They just, they just don't know. But a lot of people like they don't have uh, the proper tools and like you know the proper tools to get a stuck casing out of your rifle or get a ruptured casing or you know tighten up optics things like that um or just even basic maintenance like i've i've definitely caught people that don't have tools to clean their rifles and that's you know that's a that's that's an absolute problem um so that being said, this will be a pretty short video um, and a video that no one really asked for, but uh, I feel like it's important enough, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put it out on uh, the YouTube. So uh, I'll talk about the pouch. Uh, what I carry it in is just a Magpul DACA, super durable uh, pouch, very water uh, resistant, not waterproof, but you know, uh, much better than like carrying it inside of a Ziploc bag or something that's gonna get poked full of holes. Uh, so that's why I went to Magpul DACA. Um, where I carry it is uh, I carry it on a exterior pocket on my ruck so I can quickly pull it out and clean my rifle or I could quickly be able to pull it out and put it into another pack um, so I could like go on patrol with it or something like that. And um, you should really have all of this stuff with you when you have your rifle. It doesn't need to be on your body. Some people like to put some of this stuff on their rifle, and I think that's awesome. Uh, but if you don't have like the proper butt stock to be able to like put some of this stuff in, then you can't really do that short of just taping stuff to the side of your rifle, um, which, you know, I don't want to do. Uh, anyway, uh, but it should be with you on um, in your pack whenever you're with your rifle. Especially if you are someone who has to rely on your rifle for you know your survival, uh, you need to have these tools with you. So that's where I keep it. That's my philosophy on it. 
Uh, now I'll talk about the stuff that goes in it. Um, so the first thing is just a rag. Uh, this is a handkerchief, actually. And when I was growing up, my dad always had these. And one day it kind of clicked in my head that these would be perfect to clean with. Uh, just good, good little cleaning rags. They're relatively thin, so you can get them in small spaces, but they're durable. Um, and they're a good size, you know, not too big, not, not too small. And I found good use with those. They come in like packs of eight and they're super cheap. So uh, I, 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 I like those and they work just fine. Um, next, I have cleaning rods. And I just keep a little loop retainer on, on there, but I have cleaning rods uh, obviously to clean the bore and the chamber of my rifle, but I have cleaning rods for the reason that if I were to get a stuck casing, I would not be able to get that out with something like a bore snake. And you know, a bore snake will do fine to clean your, uh, your bore and your chamber. Well, not really your chamber, but your, but your bore. Uh, but it won't be able to do, uh, it, it doesn't have the, like, the rigidity that is required to like push a stuck casing out of your rifle, which isn't something that happens very often, I'll admit it. Um, but just like I said, if you are someone that has to rely on your rifle, you have to be prepared for it. Um, so that's why I go for the cleaning rods instead of the bore snake. Um, another thing that you can use the cleaning rods for if you maybe killed small game, you can use the cleaning rods as, as a spit to put uh, into the small game and you can roast it on a, on a fire like that. Um, so it's dual, dual, dual use use thing, but obviously the main use is uh, to clean your rifle. Uh, next, I have three brushes. I got my soft, my medium, and my, and my brass brush. Uh, just like I said, these, are, these, these rifles are sometimes exposed to salt water and things like that, so having uh, the brass brush to really help get that rust off is a good thing to have. Um, make sure that you don't get like a super rough steel brush. You know, you want to use a metal that is not as hard as steel to clean steel because if you go steel on steel, then they're going to, uh, they're going to eat each other, right? Uh, the, the steel brush is going to be eating the steel barrel of, of, uh, your, of your rifle. So, um, maybe that's just a military rifle thing, but I know that I've definitely seen steel brushes like take off like the bluing on rifles. Um, maybe that's a, that's a, that's an issue with the age and the quality of the bluing, but either way I've seen it. So um, I'll address it. Um, just some Otis brushes though. Um, while I'm here, uh, it makes me think of it. You should really get good quality cleaning gear. There's like super cheap stuff that you start to use the brushes and the bristles start to fall out and things like that. Get Otis or get a rep, a reputable brand, uh, because you know, you need, to, you, you need this stuff to work and you don't want little steel slivers and things like that or brass, uh, just uh, pieces of brush and pieces of brass to be like going off inside your rifle and making a mess. Um, so get quality stuff. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna pay for itself. Um, next thing I have is a, is a little pick to get in those hard to reach air areas. Uh, you know, if, you know, you got really excessive carbon buildup, having a pick to get in there is, uh, will be useful. Um, and I got some long Q-tips on, on a stick here. Uh, I need to replenish this a little bit, but I usually keep about like 20, 25 in, in there. Uh, good to, again, get into hard to reach areas like down in your trigger housing group, things like that. Uh, so definitely a good thing to have. Um, then I have my chamber brush, my bore brush, and my swab brush. Um, good things to have, you know, definitely the necessary thing to have. You need to make sure that your chamber and bore is clean. Um, if you don't, then especially with your chamber, if, if you don't, you're gonna start running into problems like I talked about with like stuck casings and ruptured casings and things and th things like that. Uh, so you need to make sure that, that, that it's clean. What I hate seeing is 
uh, guys that clean their chamber by like sticking their finger in there and just twisting and twisting and twisting. And the reason they do that is because the armory won't accept their weapon if there's like even a smidge of carbon in it, uh, which is wrong. That's not how rifles work. Um, they, can, they can have carbon in them. It can't be excessive carbon, uh, but it can have carbon. Um, that's a different discussion, but either way, um, you need to have like a brush or something to get that, to get all that uh, carbon built up out of it. Um, so be prepared to clean, to clean your chamber, not just your bore, which is what most people do with like a bore snake. Uh, same problem with, you know, the cleaning rods. Uh, but yeah, a bore snake doesn't clean your chamber either. Um, so really against the bore snake um, for any, I, I wouldn't say I'm against it. It works fine for cleaning your bore, but you need to have something to clean your chamber and get stuck casings out. So, um, yeah. So that pretty much ends like the normal cleaning stuff. And now we get into the rifle maintenance stuff. Um, here, front sight adjustment tool, uh, as well as a little wrench on, on the back, which fits throw lever mounts for most military optics and things like that. Uh, use that a couple times, definitely a good, a good thing to have. Um, definitely use the wrench more than the front sight tool, but either way, uh, if your optic breaks, you need to be able to use your iron sights and they should be zeroed, but if they're not, then you have that to, uh, to zero them. <clears throat> Next thing I'll talk about is something that I haven't seen very many people carry except for me, uh, and this is a ruptured cartridge extractor. Um, a ruptured cartridge is when the like butt end of the cartridge gets ripped off by the uh, extractor, but the rest of the cartridge is still inside the chamber, and there's no way to get it out unless you have one of these. And the way that this works is it goes in the chamber, and these little tines snap over the end of the over the front end of the cartridge or the casing, and it you send your bolt forward, your extractor grabs onto this and you pull your bolt to the rear and it pulls the, uh, the piece of brass out of the chamber. Um, not something that happens very often. I don't know if I've ever seen it happen, but if it does happen and you don't have this, then your rifle is down, right? And it, it can happen from any number of things, not just your like the cleanliness of, of, of your rifle. It can happen from bad ammo too. Um, which again, doesn't happen very often, but if it does happen and you don't have that, then you're SOL. Uh, so super small, light, easy to carry. This one's made of steel, which I like. Um, and it also has the ability to unscrew in half here and you can attach just the front end to a cleaning rod and you can pull it out manually like that if for whatever reason you don't want to use your bolt, your uh, bolt and bolt carrier group. Good thing to carry, super cheap, uh, and it's, you know, a necessity if you are someone who has to rely on your rifle to work all the time. Um, next thing, I guess it's more of a general purpose item, but I've used it on my rifle, so I, include, so I in included it here. And this is a little extension for uh, my Leatherman Wave, and it goes up with the Leatherman Bit Kit. Um, what I've used it for is, uh, my pistol grip. If my pistol grip starts to come loose, um, which I know shouldn't happen, should be locked tight and should be like, you know, it should never come loose. But like I said, military rifles, they get beat up a lot. Uh, so it happens. Uh, so I've used it for that. I've also used it for other optics and things like that. Um, I've wanted to have a little extension for my multi-tool enough times that I, uh, that I, that I justify being able to, to, to carry a, a little one inside of my uh, rifle cleaning kit. Um, so, and then to go with that is the Leatherman bit kit. Um, I don't normally carry all of these. What I do is I choose a few ones that I know fit certain things and I take those with me. But if you want to carry all of them, you can carry all, all of them. You can see it's a pretty small package, but there is a little bit of weight to them. Um, not that bad though. Leatherman bit kit, and then a couple bottles of CLP. Make sure that they're always full before I leave. 
Um, you know, I got one to move my rifle, uh, some extra to clean my rifle with, and then, you know, a third because you never have too much. Um, always make sure that all this stuff gets replenished before I go anywhere. And uh, like I said, stays in the outside pocket of my rucksack. One thing that uh, I normally keep inside here, but I recently lent to someone and it never made its way back to me is a lens pen. Uh, just a little, uh, just a little lens pen uh, is useful to clean optics and things like that. It's not super necessary for like normal optics that have like uh, a glass um, front and or objective and uh, eyepiece lens things like that. But it's it it can get important for some of the thermal optics because the you can't just go rubbing any old rag on the front of those a lot of times. So having a lens pen is good to clean those off and make sure that they're uh, make sure that they're good to go. Uh, so yeah, I normally keep a lens pen inside here, but like I said, it it, uh, it walked away from me recently and I haven't got to uh, to to replace it yet. Um, so rifle maintenance kit. Uh, definitely something that is, I feel severely overlooked or under, um, under planned for, and people are just in, in general a little bit undereducated about it. Um, so I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.